This is a subject that I have avoided doing a video on for a very long time. I get requested it a lot, but I've been reluctant because it's such a subjective matter. The question is, what are the characteristics of a high quality woman? One of the biggest problems is that the answer to this question is going to be different for everybody. For example, some men want a very traditional partner, someone who's extremely feminine, who's going to be a homemaker and just stay home, raising the children, cleaning the house, cooking the meals. And if that's what you want, awesome. That's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. For me personally, while I can understand why that's attractive, I just want somebody with a little bit more ambition than that. I think it's actually attractive when a woman has a life separate to me and outside of the home. So neither preference is better or worse than the other. They're just different. I'll give you another example of how subjective this question can be. Because for me personally, it would be essential that my partner is very comfortable in nature. So we could go hiking, uh, camping. She'd need to be someone who liked animals. Another man could care less about that stuff. He lives an inner city lifestyle. He lives in an apartment. There's no animals. He has no pets. What does it matter to him whether his partner enjoys being in nature? So this whole question is extremely subjective, but I get asked it a lot. And so after giving it some thought, I realized that there were some traits that objectively should apply all the time that are universally desirable. And so I'm going to give you my list of 10 characteristics of a high quality woman that I think objectively speaking, all men should agree with. Number one, she's got to be intelligent. Now, because of female hypergamy and women wanting to date up, it's unlikely that she's going to be as intelligent as you because women just won't be attracted to you if you're dumber than she is but she's got to be intelligent. It's not enough to be with a woman who's just gonna stimulate your body. That's not enough for long-term success. She has to also be able to stimulate your mind. She needs to be able to understand what you're talking about. So if you're explaining your perspective on something or a different concept or idea, she needs to be able to comprehend the words that you're saying. And of course, she needs to be interesting in her own right. She needs to have her own ideas, her own perspective that you find fascinating. Number two. She needs to be attractive. Now, from my experience, most men put too much emphasis on this particular one. If you're going to be in a long-term relationship with somebody, the importance of their looks is going to fade over time. The novelty of beauty does eventually wear off. So even if you're married to a supermodel, absolutely stunning woman, eventually you will start to take her looks for granted. That's just how it works. But even being aware of that phenomena, it is still important that she's attractive. She needs to be pleasant to look at. You're going to spend the rest of your life with this woman. Now, to a certain degree, how attractive she is, is going to be determined by factors outside of her control. What's most important in determining whether or not somebody is beautiful or not is their genetics. But women do have some control over their appearance. And even a plain looking girl can do a lot to eat healthy, to stay in good shape, to make sure that her appearance is neat, tidy, well presented. If you put in the effort, there is a lot that you actually can do. And that's why I didn't say beautiful on my list. I said attractive because a woman might not have the good genes to guarantee that she's always going to be beautiful in whatever circumstances. But at a minimum, she should put in the effort to make sure that she's attractive. Number three, she is open to therapy. The truth is that we all have issues. If you claim to be some 100% emotionally healthy, well-adjusted person who could get nothing out of going to therapy, I don't believe you. I also wouldn't believe a woman who says that. We all have issues, things unresolved from our past. The real question is, how are you going to deal with it? And there are two different ways. The first is the negative path, where you avoid the problem, project it onto other people, blame, distract yourself, uh, get lost in addictions. Or there's the positive way of dealing with it that involves self-growth, honest internal inquiry, finding the courage necessary to face your inner demons and challenge yourself to become a better version of who you are. From what I've seen, a woman who is completely closed off to the idea of therapy or some equivalent of that is somebody who's not dealing with their issues, somebody who's going to be bringing a lot of drama into your life. When encountering difficulty in her life, she doesn't look inside herself and take responsibility for her own role in it. She will attack you and blame you. In a very short period of time, being in a relationship with a woman like that, you will be miserable. But a woman who's willing, when issues come up, to look at them honestly, to talk them through with you, and to take responsibility for her own part in creating those issues, 
that is a high quality woman. So if you meet a woman who says that she's been to therapy or is willing to go to therapy, that's a good sign. Number four, she is feminine. This is especially important because our culture seems hell-bent on denigrating all forms of femininity. In a society that is glorifying masculine, empowered ambition, a woman who's in touch with her genuine, nurturing, kind, feminine side is a rare thing. You want a woman who owns her feminine side, who likes to create beauty in herself and in the home. You want to find a woman who loves children and who wants to be a mother. If you ever hear a woman say, oh, I can't stand kids, run, because that's a woman who's not in touch with her own femininity. This might sound strange, but if you catch your partner doing things like watching YouTube compilation videos of cute baby animals, that's a good sign. That's what a normal, healthy, feminine woman would enjoy doing. It's also a good sign if she's in touch with her femininity enough to be able to appreciate your masculinity. If she respects your leadership and she's grateful and appreciative of the way that you take charge and lead in your partner dynamic, that's a really good sign. Basically, you want to find a woman who's happy to let you be a man and she be a woman. Number five, she is sexually generous. You're a man and you like to have sex. A woman who is ashamed of her sexuality or not interested in having sex is not a woman who's in touch with her true desires. It's not natural. Women should enjoy sex. I'm not saying that she needs to have the sexual confidence of a stripper, but if sex is rare in your relationship, or if you're the only person who ever initiates sex, if you always go down on her, but she never returns the favor and you never receive blowjobs, that's a problem. You want to be with somebody who enjoys sex and enjoys seeing you sexually fulfilled. A high quality woman is a woman who understands your sexual needs and is excited to make you happy. Number six, she is invested in you. If you're familiar with this channel, then you should be familiar with hypergamy, the female instinct to find a high quality mate. Women typically don't rush their decision on who they're going to settle down with, they might play the field a little bit, see what's out there, and see how high a quality a mate they can attract. But eventually, they have to choose, and you want to find a woman who unreservedly chooses you. In my most recent podcast, I covered the story of a woman in her mid-30s who wanted to open up her relationship and become polyamorous. The result was completely disastrous for her male partner. And this is the consequence of being with a woman who hasn't invested in you, who hasn't chosen you. You cannot risk being in a long-term relationship with an immature woman who still has childhood fantasies of being whisked away by a prince. If she's overcome those immature tendencies, she understands reality and she's got clarity on what she wants, that's a good sign. She's done the necessary self-work and she no longer has wandering eyes looking around all the time, trying to see if there's a better option out there. A high quality woman understands herself and understands what she wants. And when she sees you, she wants to commit to you. She's ready for that. Number seven, she has high quality friends. This is important because you can tell a lot about somebody by the company that they keep. If you've spent time around your partner's friends and they're the kind of women that all they do is bitch and complain or brag about how much money they made in the divorce, run away. Even if your partner seems different to those friends, still run away. It's not worth the risk. You do not want these women whispering in your partner's ear. A good rule of thumb to follow when trying to figure out whether or not your partner's friends are high quality or not is ask yourself this. If you weren't with your partner, would you date her friends? If the answer is a resounding no, and that's a bad sign. But if the answer is yes, like, yeah, there are some nice women here. I could have dated these women if I'd met them first. That's a good sign. It's absolutely essential that you respect the people that she chooses to be friends with. And on a practical level, you're going to be spending a lot of time with these women, so you need to get on with them. As a side note, it's also essential that you respect her choices and ex-partners. If she's dated nothing but loser scumbags, men that you absolutely don't respect, that's also a bad sign. Number eight, she wants to know you. Relationships are extremely complex. And one of the factors that makes them so complicated is because we have these fantasies of who our partner should be that often conflicts with the reality of who they are. Every woman is unique and she'll have her own specific problems. Could be daddy issues, uh, abandonment, trauma, low self-esteem, whatever it may be. 
Whatever these issues are, one of the most common coping mechanisms is to try and find salvation in a specific type of partner. I'm talking about women here, but men absolutely do it too. So what she'll do is she'll create this fantasy mythical idea of the perfect husband, the perfect partner who's going to ride in on his white horse and solve all of her problems. As nice as this fantasy sounds, it's actually toxic and it causes a lot of arguments. If she's attached to this fantasy image of a partner, every time you show the reality of who you are and you just be yourself, if that conflicts with her idea of how you should be, it's going to cause a fight, going to cause an argument. She'll get extremely upset and she'll start demanding that you behave the way that she wants you to behave, the way that her ideal partner would behave. That kind of thing causes a lot of drama and is a red flag. It's a sign of emotional immaturity. It shows that she's not really interested in you. She's just interested in the degree to which you can accurately portray her character that she's created. A high quality woman is different. A high quality woman is someone who wants to know the reality of who you are. When I say the reality, I mean all the reality, not just the good stuff, all the bad stuff too. A high quality woman will support you when you're down, when you failed, and there will be bad times in your life, it's unavoidable. A high quality woman is right there with you. She wants to know all the most painful memories of your childhood. She wants to know your deepest fears and your deepest shames. Obviously, you don't start with that stuff. You need to demonstrate high quality first, otherwise she's not going to invest in you. But you need a woman who's going to be able to move beyond that phase and want to get to know you at a deeper level. You want her to be interested and curious about the real you. A high quality woman loves you, supports you, and wants to know you. Number nine, she has the correct relationship with her parents. Now, pay attention. I said the correct relationship not a good relationship. Now, there's nothing wrong with a woman having a good relationship with her parents. That's actually preferable, but not absolutely necessary. It does make everything a lot easier if her parents are high quality people who did a great job raising her, they're still in each other's life, you like and respect their parents. That just simplifies things. But what's really good in that situation is that she has the correct relationship with her parents. If her parents are good people and she has a good relationship with them, that is the appropriate response. If her parents are obviously great people and she has a terrible relationship with them, then that is the incorrect relationship and that's a red flag. The flip side of that is that if her parents are terrible people, obviously neglectful and abusive and just kind of vicious in their character, then if she has a good relationship with those kinds of people, that's not good. The correct relationship to have with parents who are obviously terrible people is an extremely limited one with very strong boundaries put in place. If a woman has an incorrect relationship with parents, that she gets on really well with terrible people, that's going to cause drama down the line because she still hasn't resolved her childhood issues. It shows that fundamentally her judgment is off and that she still has work to do. Number 10, she's not materialistic. Money does not buy happiness. Hopefully you figured this out already and hopefully she has as well. Nobody's on their deathbed saying, I wish I'd made more money. What's really important in life are the relationships you have with people, the experiences that you have, your mental health. Materialistic girls do not understand this. They're high maintenance and they're very immature. They're also never satisfied because materialism is a bottomless pit. You're always going to want more and more and more. And so if you're trying to satiate your partner's needs, if they're material needs, it's going to be a huge leak of your energy. Life is too short to spend your valuable time and energy working hard just to appease the needs of some materialistic brat. If you meet a woman who says that she's happy to live in a simple cottage, have her two and a half children, living a simple life, that's a good sign. It indicates that she understands what's important in life and what isn't. So there you have it. 10 characteristics of a high quality woman. Now, this is not gospel. These are not commandments that you need to follow. They're just a general guideline and my own thoughts. Perhaps you've got your own preferences and I'd love to hear them. Make sure to leave a comment down below. I do have a couple of honorable mentions, things that I think are important, but didn't quite make the list. A good sense of humor. That's important. Life is a lot more enjoyable when you're having fun and you want to be able to joke around with your partner. Creativity. I think that women who have a creative outlet and engage in dance, music, drawing, whatever it may be, I just think they're more interesting. A low partner count. It means that she's got a greater ability to pair bond, which just makes everything a lot easier. And the same taste in music and TV. Again, it doesn't seem that important, but in terms of your practical life, it just helps a lot if you guys like the same things. So that's it. Make sure to leave a comment below and tell me what you think is an important characteristic in a high quality woman.